Hello and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple A Day. This episode continues my series on text functions for Apple Numbers. Today I'll be covering the text between function. Text between is similar to text before and text after. I have a detailed tutorial on these related functions right here. I'll also put in a link in the description below. So text between lets you search text for a starting text string and an ending text string. If they're both found, then everything in between is returned. As usual, it's best to show by example. In the numbers document that I have open, I have a list of product codes. Each code contains three segments separated by a hyphen. Let's say I needed to pull out this middle chunk between the first hyphen and the second hyphen. Text between is the perfect function for this scenario. In the second column, I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. Then I'll type in text between and press return. So this function takes five parameters. The first parameter is the source string. This is the text string to be searched. I'll select the first product code and then press the tab key to move to the second parameter. This parameter and the next one are the search strings. The one I'm in is the first search string and I wanna search for a hyphen. So I'll type that in inside double quotes. Then I'll press tab again to move to the second search parameter and what's great about this is the search strings can be different, but in this example, I do need them to be the same, so I'll type in another hyphen in double quotes. These next two parameters let you fine tune which occurrence or instance of the search string that you wanna use. This is useful if the search string appears multiple times within the source string. If you ignore these parameters, they'll both default to one. Having said that, I will type in the number one for each parameter, and I'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, so if I press return, the middle section is returned. So what's happening is it's finding the first hyphen and the second hyphen and then returning back everything in between. I'll click on the auto fill handle and that's this handle in yellow and drag it to the bottom of the column and this will copy the formula to all the cells underneath. And you can see that the formula worked for each one of these product codes. Okay, so back to the occurrence parameters. I'll double click the formula to edit it so the first occurrence indicates which instance of the search string we're gonna use. And in this example, it's the first hyphen that we're gonna use. So right now we're using the first occurrence because it's set to one. If I set this to two, it'll use the second occurrence. You can also count from the end of the source string. If I type in a minus one, it'll use the last occurrence of the search string. And a minus two refers to the second last occurrence. Basically, it just starts at the end and counts backwards. So where it gets confusing is the second occurrence parameter. It's also set to one. So you would think that both the first and second occurrence parameters are referencing the same instance of the hyphen because they're both set to one. And that makes sense, but the formula returns the text between the first and second hyphen. So what the heck is happening here? Well, the way it works is the second occurrence parameter doesn't start counting the instances until after the first search string is found. So because the second occurrence parameter is set to one, that just means it's finding the first instance after the first search string is found. So after the first hyphen is found, then it starts counting from there. So this first hyphen is found for the first occurrence, and that's the new starting point. And then the second occurrence will find the first instance after that. And that's why the occurrence parameters are both set to one. I'll add some more hyphens to the text to make it clearer. So after adding the extra hyphens, it's still finding the text between the first two hyphens. Let's change the first occurrence to a two. I'll double click on the formula to edit it, change it to a two, and notice that I'm leaving the second occurrence still set to one. I'll press return, and now this section is the new result. It finds the second hyphen, which is here, and then it finds the first hyphen after that, which is here, and the text in between is returned. I'll edit the formula one more time and change the second occurrence to a three. I'll press return and now these three sections are the result. So again, it finds the second hyphen just like before, and then after that, it starts counting to the third hyphen, one, two, and three, and then everything in between is returned. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna edit the formula again, and this time I'm gonna change the second occurrence to a minus one. Now minus one finds the last instance of the search string, which is this hyphen right here. 
I'll press return and the result is the same because this is the same hyphen as before. If I change the second occurrence to a minus two, it will then find the second last hyphen and return those two sections. So one thing to be aware of, text between will return an error if either of the search strings do not exist or their occurrence doesn't exist. I'll add a new formula by typing in the equal sign and then type in the function name text between and press return. I'll select the product code again for the source text and then press tab to move to the first search string. I'll type in the hyphen again in double quotes, press tab and do the same thing for the second parameter, press tab again. And for the first occurrence, I'll leave this at a one and press tab again. And for the second occurrence, I'm gonna type in a seven. If I press return, this gives me an error. I'll click on the error and numbers tells me that that instance of the hyphen does not exist. I'll edit the formula and change the first search string to AAA instead of a hyphen. I'll press return and I get an error again. I'll click on it and this time the message says that AAA is not found. So that's two kinds of errors. Either the occurrence is wrong or the search string is wrong. So obviously you don't want to see an error message in your numbers document. So to work around this error, we're going to use the if error function. I've got a detailed tutorial on if error and it can be found right here. I'll also add it to the description below. So once again, I'll double click on the formula to edit it. And at the very beginning, I'll type in the function name if error and then an opening bracket. And then I'll move to the end of the line and type in a comma and two double quotes, which is an empty string, then a closing bracket. So what's happening here is if there's an error, then this empty string will be returned. Otherwise, it will return the result of the text between function. I'll press return and the error message is gone. We just have a blank cell. This is very useful if the source string structure is not consistent. Okay, so moving on to the next example, I've got some text here and let's say I want to find the text between the word war and this comma here. This can be done using text between because it lets us use two different search strings. I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. Then I'll type in text between and press return. I'll select the text for the source string and press tab to go to the first search string. And in double quotes, I'm gonna type in war, period, and then a space. I'll press tab to move to the second search string. And here I'm gonna type in a comma in double quotes. I'll leave the occurrence parameters at their default values and just press return. And this only gives me rebel spaceships. Well, that's because there's two commas. So it finds the text war period space, and then it finds the first comma, which is right here, after the word spaceships. So it worked properly. I just have to modify the function parameters to select the second comma. I'll double click on it and select the second occurrence, and then type in two and press return. Now it finds the second comma and returns the phrase I was expecting. So that pretty much covers text between a very useful text function along with text before and text after. Thanks so much for watching. I'm John Martins. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.